Then eastbound on 50th Street. The suspects now drive past the house at 10314 Marlat, where two of the suspects, George Smith and Chris Harbin, live. The suspects do not stop and continue eastbound on 50th Street, and then northbound on Dodd Street. As the suspects near the cross street of Belgrave at Dodd, they are encountered by Deputy Russ Romo, CHP Officer Bill Crow, and Deputy Tony Reynard, who have just driven up on this location in separate units, not knowing that the suspects were on Dodd Street. The suspects begin to immediately fire on all three units in front of them. Okay, uh, one of the units is following now. He's northbound. I don't know the name of the street. Riverside over 211. You know, 105, I believe. Yeah, over 211. Are you able to communicate with our people? Side 211. Suspect vehicles are continuing north. From where? From one of the units on uh, Belgrade, I believe it is. We're approaching that vehicle at this time. Okay. After the suspects turn eastbound onto Belgrave, their gunfire disables all three units. Deputy Romo just misses being struck in the head by a bullet. Officer Crow is struck in the right arm and is later attended to by Officer Ernest. Deputy Reynard receives a serious injury to his left elbow and is later attended to by Deputy Madden. Uh, Baker 1, the unit is just turned southbound off of Belgrave. The SO unit just passed. As the suspects pull away from the deputies, they pass beside a civilian vehicle driving westbound on Belgrave and fire on it. The civilian vehicle is disabled, but no one is injured. This next group of slides shows the damage to just one of the units being driven by Deputy Reynard. Inside the patrol unit, you see what happens to items carried in the front seat during a chase. This is the injury to Reynard's left arm. The suspect vehicle turns southbound onto Bain Street from Belgrave and passes a group of four 12-year-olds on bicycles that just happen to be there. The suspects fire on them, but only one of them is wounded in the finger. The suspects now are not being chased by any ground units. Baker 1, the Riverside Police helicopter, however, is able to continue surveillance. Baker 1 continues to follow the suspects as they are not being followed by ground units. The suspects turn westbound onto 50th once again and pass by Chris Harbin and George Smith's house without stopping. 10-4, uh, still request an ambulance at that location. Baker 1, the vehicle has just turned northbound. I believe it's on Etiwanda at this time. It's northbound. Back the other way. Etiwanda. We got Sam, what you coming in this area? Deputy John Zellis, a detective with the Riverside Sheriff's Department, was in a plane unit eastbound on Belgrave approaching Etiwanda when he saw the suspect vehicle northbound on Etiwanda and gave chase. Edward 214, I'm behind the vehicle northbound. They are hooded subjects. We just put another clip in the weapon. Fired at this officer. Edward 214, copy. Northbound, watch your cross. 
Just past Belgrave. Northbound, just past Belgrave. Purify, if you can, has Ontario been notified? Only got about 40 minutes left on fuel here. Edward 214, Edward 229, what's the description of the vehicle? It's a yellow pickup truck, a big international uh, pickup truck. There's two subjects in the back. They've got hoods on, and they just saw him put another clip in the weapon. There were 310 traffic. Baker 1 vehicle is still northbound, approaching Highway 60. Northbound at Highway, coming to Highway 60. They're slowing down. There's at least one in the back and one in driving, I believe, or might be a passenger. Baker 1, the vehicle has turned left on the mission. He's now westbound on mission. Westbound on mission from Etiwanda. Flaky is going to be going westbound on Highway 60, westbound toward Los Angeles on Highway 60. Deputy Zealous followed the suspects northbound on Etiwanda to Highway 60, then westbound on Highway 60 to the temporary I-15, continuing northbound. A call for extra helicopters is made to the San Bernardino Sheriff's Department and Ontario Police Department. Deputy Parks and Deputy Chisholm catch up to Deputy Zealous and take the position as lead vehicle in the pursuit. Just after the suspects turn northbound onto I-15, the first San Bernardino helicopter, 40 King 1, a Hughes 500C helicopter, arrives in the area. It was piloted by Lieutenant John Gibson and observed by Sergeant Ron Hittle. The suspects fire on the helicopter and hit it. One bullet strikes the left landing skid, which bounces off that and into the underside of the helicopter. The bullet goes between Lieutenant Gibson's legs and strikes the instrument panel, causing an electrical fire. 40 King 1 was able to make a safe forced landing at Rialto Airport without injury to Lieutenant Gibson or Sergeant Hiddle. The bullet did damage to the helicopter's radio equipment. As units from several other police agencies catch up to Deputy Parks and Chisholm, it became evident that the suspects were able to shoot at the units with a good deal of accuracy from about a half mile away. Deputy Parks requested that all units in the pursuit turn off their emergency lights, since they presented an obvious visible target to the suspects. Turn your lights off, car hit at 13, that's a target. Uh, be advised, they were firing, I wouldn't get too close. Sir, high-powered rifles. Got you covered. Whoops, Yeah, get too close. Madden? Confirming 15 north to Vegas, uh, Barstow. That's affirmative. Uh, we're approaching Baseline Road. Direction 4th Street, northbound 15. Copy. We're behind you with a CHP also. Keep your lights off. They've been firing from half mile around, hitting units. Copy. We'll run our lights till we see you and then cut them. They haven't thrown anything out of the truck yet, so they must have that weapon they fired at me with. They could be low on ammo. I hear rounds. There you go. They're firing rounds now. God, they'll shoot at you. Dallas, where are you at? Brown Ford. Where are you, right behind him? Edward 310 to go with driving. Dallas, why don't we go to 3 and try to figure out what we're going to do here? Wait till they run out of gas or ammo. That's affirmative. Just keep inside, let the helicopters do the rest. Uh, Riverside, keep in contact with CHP helicopters. We're going to have to hold off a considerable distance. Edward 310, copy. The CHP up behind me, if you're monitoring, can you block that traffic coming up on us? Make a break in it. Yeah, we're 20, yeah, we're 21. San Bernardino, Riverside, uh... Riverside, Baker, when you have, uh, San Bernardino, uh, go to their Claymore frequency. Riverside, Baker, one, coming. Turn off that other red one. One unit passed Deputy Parks and Chisholm's unit and approached the suspect vehicle. Suddenly, an explosion took place in front of that unit. An additional two explosions took place during the pursuit. For information, I'm throwing explosives out of the vehicle. Uh, apparently, they've got shotguns and possibly M16. Chair 59, copy. CHP is closing off uh, the freeway at Highland. Uh, they have explosives. That's the permanent. They've ex uh, thrown one explosive device out the rear only. Okay, that was a simulator. The suspects exited the I-15 freeway at the Sierra off-ramp and began to enter the San Bernardino National Forest through an area known as Lytle Creek. The pursuit had already covered some 35 miles from the Security Pacific Bank in Norco to this position in about 42 minutes. Deputy Parks and Chisholm's unit is disabled by bullets striking the radiator. 
Three CHP units and Deputy James Evans of the Riverside Sheriff's Department lead the chase of the suspects. Get up on Sierra. That's 481. It's area 13. Now we're getting off Sierra, off the 15, going in a general easterly direction. Sierra 15, off 15 at Sierra, going in an easterly direction. Sierra to the head. Do you need a ride? I got him. Freeway 13, we're in a westerly direction on Sierra at this time, undergoing underneath the 15. Westbound on Sierra, under 15. 74, we just entered San Bernardino National Forest. Oh, no, I've been hit. Nothing serious. 74, do you have visual contact with the suspect? That's far, we're right behind him. Therefore. The suspects drive the stolen pickup into the Lytle Creek area of the San Bernardino National Forest. The pursuit eventually leaves the paved road and continues for about seven miles on winding dirt roads, the width of which is about 10 to 12 feet. The suspects had come to Lytle Creek as this is the place where they had taught themselves how to use their weapons. Deputy Evans begins to call out the pursuit as the paved road ends and the winding road begins. Okay, fall back. They're really fine now. Possibly blown backwards by the wind. 10-4, you know with Evans, advise your location uh, and are they stationary at that point? That's the negative. They're moving. We're a quarter mile from the Ranger Station on Sierra Road in the National Forest. They're firing like crazy. Can anybody on this frequency see the vehicle? I think Evans uh, is the closest one. Okay, we, uh, we got him up here. We had to slow down. He laid a bar barrage on us at the last curve. Sergeant Bender and Detective Hopkins, undercover narcotics detectives of the Riverside Sheriff's Department, were also in the pursuit in a plane unit. They had the only radio that could communicate with the San Bernardino Sheriff's helicopter that was overhead in the pursuit. These two detectives would communicate with Deputy Evans as to the position of the suspect vehicle during this pursuit. 320, can you tell us how far behind we are? Just a minute, we'll check with the chopper. Okay, there's two vehicles at the end of the pavement. They're continuing on. We'll get an update. Uh, chopper advised there may be hostages in the back of that truck. This is a deep fire. Okay, just going around the first large curve at the end of the pavement. We're going to have two CHP units sail off the road for any traffic accident. After deputies Parks and Chisholm abandoned their unit, they were picked up by Detective Jordan of Riverside Sheriff's Department. Deputy Parks was able to commandeer a 22 caliber lever action rifle from a target shooter in the area. Deputy D.J. McCarty and Deputy Jim McFerrin of the San Bernardino Sheriff's Department were responding from their Fontana substation with an M16 rifle to use against the suspects. Hammer 223 units in the front. Uh, San Bernardino is uh, trying to make their way up to the front. They have an automatic weapon. Hammer 21. That way so. Okay, uh, Hammer 320 to all the units in the chase and pursuit. They were about a mile behind them. So we come in there to the uh, lever action 22. So we have a little more uh, long range. Eventually, the gunman and the getaway vehicle came upon a washout in the road about halfway up the west side of Mount Baldy. The suspect vehicle comes to a stop unknown to Deputy Evans. Okay, I'm moving. That's San Bernardino. You can come up and catch them on going up the ridge line over there with a mountain backdrop. 302, are they moving? All four of the suspects get out of the pickup. They stand at the back of it waiting for the first units to round a corner about 75 yards south of them. One suspect stands against the side of the mountain and moves closer to the bend up the road where Deputy Evans is about to appear. As soon as Deputy Evans rounds the curve, his unit is immediately fired upon. Numerous bullets begin striking Deputy Evans' unit. His windshield is shattered by gunfire. The interior of Deputy Evans' unit begins to disintegrate. Deputy Evans makes his last transmission. Okay. 